Hi, this is episode 38 of Krondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. It's the middle of the week, and on Wednesdays, I like to cover a random development topic. And today, I'm going to discuss a slightly odd question of, is writing bad code immoral? Which leads to the concept of the importance of developing well-written code. This may seem like a weird question to ask because the mindset of most developers is probably that code projects are neither moral or immoral. They're simply files of programming that perform various functionalities. I'd like to think that most developers take pride in their work and therefore want to write code that adheres to best practices. However, Given schedule constraints, many projects seem to have the top goal of simply working and being completed as soon as humanly possible so you can move on to the next project. The problem is that this mindset can lead to issues such as missing edge cases for features and poorly organized code bases that are difficult to maintain and for other developers to add functionality to. Regarding the question of is writing bad code immoral, I heard a great story from one of my computer science professors at Texas Tech, Dr. Michael Gelfond, which is where I got the idea to actually create this post. During one of our lectures, he posed this question to us, and then he told a story. A few decades ago, when he was a programmer working for a software organization, he ran into a nasty code bug. It took him several days to figure out that the previous developer had built a poorly constructed function that was causing the module that he was working on to break. After he told us the story, he asked us again if writing bad code was immoral. Most of the class answered that it wasn't. But then he asked if we murder someone a few days before they were going to die, is that immoral? To which everyone answered with the unanimous, yes. He finished his lecture by saying, well, wasn't it immoral that the last developer's code stole two days away from my life? He makes a pretty valid point. The story and the question have stuck with me for years, and now my answer to the question, is writing bad code immoral, is a resounding yes. As developers, we should take pride in the work that we produce, not just for our clients or employees' interests, but simply due to the fact that our goal should be to be craftsmen in everything that we do. Coding is the closest thing that we have to magic in our world, and I feel honored to be able to work with it on a daily basis, along with being able to teach others how to do the same. And with that in mind, it should motivate us to have a clearly defined goal of being excellent at our craft. One of my favorite all-time baseball players was Joe DiMaggio, and he had a great quote that I think is very applicable to software developers. He said, there is always some kid who may be seeing me for the first time. I owe him my best. I try to apply this in all the code projects that I do. It's easy to fall into lazy habits. However, then I remind myself that someone might be looking at this project or this tutorial and it could be the first impression that they have about me as a developer and also about programming in general. And if I take shortcuts, even if the application works, it could reflect badly on the work that I do and the languages I work with. This doesn't mean that you can't make mistakes, quite the opposite. I'm constantly striving to become a better developer, and because of that, I'm always trying to work on building features and projects that I've not created before, which naturally leads to mistakes during the learning process. However, there's a clear distinction between mistakes that get made while you're trying to build an ambitious feature compared with project bugs that pop up due to laziness and poorly written code. So if writing bad code is immoral, how can we combat against this? Thankfully, we have a nice set of tools and workflows that can be implemented. Here are a few of the ones that I've found the most effective. The first is test-driven and behavior-driven development. Regardless of your thoughts of these processes, there's no denying that if it's implemented properly, it can lead to well-constructed code bases. TDD naturally leads to following best practices such as low coupling and using small methods. And with its refactoring step, I'm a huge fan of using it to ensure that an application is built the right way. Another helpful tool is continuous integration tools. 
Assuming that you have a comprehensive automated test suite, continuous integration tools such as CodeShip or Travis will make sure that your code will not be pushed to production until all of the tests pass. I've had a number of times where a code ship has blocked a bad deploy that would have taken down a site and given the development team a report on what needed to be fixed. Next is pair programming. This is one of the most powerful tools you can use as a developer. If you're not familiar with it, pair programming is a process where you and another developer both take turns working on a project at the same time, preferably in the same room and on the same computer. When one of you is coding, the other developer is watching and giving advice or warnings. Whenever I'm building a complex feature, I'll always use pair programming since it's a highly focused, effective way to develop and also follow best practices. The last one is continuing education. No matter how long you've been a developer, you'll never reach a stage where the learning ends. Each day I try to learn something new, whether it's from tutorials, books, or blog posts from other programmers. I hope that this has been a thought-provoking post and will help put you on a journey towards becoming a code craftsman.